What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to put together the all new Odroid Go Advance. Now in this video, we're not gonna be covering any of the software installation. I will create another video for that if anybody's interested. But this video is strictly dedicated to putting the hardware itself together. After all, this is a do-it-yourself retro console and it comes in a kit like you see here. Assembly of the Advance Go is pretty straightforward, but there's a few things you really need to be careful with, namely the screen and the connector for the analog stick, but we'll get into that when it's time. So here's the full kit. First up, we have all of our buttons on this little tree. You can actually break them off with your fingers, or you could use a little pair of scissors if you want to. Here's the conductive pads for all of our buttons, minus the L and the R button. Those don't need conductive pads. There's two sets of screws, a long set and a short set. We also have our speaker, analog stick, a 3000 milliamp hour battery, a 3.5 inch LCD display. You need to be very careful when installing this. We also have the front and the back half of our case. You might notice that I have a screen protector on mine already, but I have an extra here. Don't put this on until we have the screen in place. You want to make sure there's no dust on that screen before you put this on. A quad core 1.3 gigahertz Cortex A35 CPU, 1 gig of RAM, and a dual core Mali G32 GPU. So if you're interested in customizing your Odroid Go Advance, like painting the case itself from the inside, do not assemble it first. You want to paint this case before you start the assembly. You don't want to have to take this screen back out and risk breaking it. I have a full customization tutorial coming up very soon on the channel. But like I mentioned, this is an assembly tutorial, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So the very first thing we need to do to get this put together is put the screen in. We're going to be using the front half of the case itself. Now yours won't have a screen protector pre-installed and I would leave it off until we get this screen fully installed in it. It's going to look something like this. Now when placing the screen in the front half of the case, be very careful with it. This screen is kind of fragile. You do not want to put any force on it when we're placing it in here and it needs to be installed correctly the first time. You don't want to have to take this screen back out. This is the main board. It's gonna sit right inside of the case like this, and there's a cutout inside of the main board for the screen's ribbon cable and the analog stick's ribbon cable to come through and connect to the board. Now, I can't stress this enough. Be very careful when putting this screen in. You do not wanna put a lot of force on it. It would easily crack. There are six clips that are gonna hold this screen in, and you wanna place the screen under three of them. It actually doesn't matter if you do it on the top or the bottom, but I've personally been doing it on the top. Now that we have three clips already installed, we need to kind of flex the case so we can get that screen in. And like I mentioned, you do not want to put a lot of force on this screen whatsoever. I'm doing this very gently to get the other three clips locked in place. It's now locked in place. Make sure all six clips are over the back of the screen and check that it's completely seated in the case. If for some reason you do crack the screen, they do sell replacements on Odroid's website, but you need to be very careful with this when installing it for the very first time. So once your screen's in place, you can actually put the screen protector on the front. It's very easy to do. You'll just need to peel the backing off and place it right on the case itself. Now it's time to install the analog stick. You're gonna use two of the shorter screws. It's gonna only line up one way, and it sits in here really nicely. I just usually hold it with one finger, and put the two screws in. Now with every single screw you're putting in this case, be gentle with the screws. You do not need to torque them down that tight. So now we have the analog stick and the screen in place. It's time to install the buttons and then we can throw the main board in. So on the Go Advance, there's six buttons at the bottom of the unit. Two are gonna be start and select. The other four will be used for different menu actions. We'll also need our A, B, X, Y action buttons. These are specifically designed to only go in one way. And along with those, we'll need the conductive pads that go underneath them. And finally, for the front half of the case, we'll need our D-pad. We're gonna save the L and R triggers for later on in the video. The start, select, and the menu buttons aren't hard plastic. These are just rubber with the conductive pads underneath. And they're gonna go in the six slots near the bottom of the case here. They'll just kind of fall right in there. Just make sure they are snug. Now we'll need to place our action buttons in the case, A, B, X, Y. These only go in one way, so it's only gonna fit in the correct location. Once we have the buttons in place, it's time to add our conductive pads for the action buttons. 
Now this is really nice because there's a little nub that these will sit on, so you don't have to worry about these moving around when we put the main board in and the back half of the case. We're now going to install the D-pad. Again, it only goes in one way. There's a little cutout here and there's a little cutout in the case. Same thing with the conductive pad on the D-pad. It'll go right in here over these two little nubs and it won't move around on us. All that's left to do on this front half is place the speaker in. There's a little cutout inside of the case where your wires will follow and this is going to wrap around the main board. I'll show you that in just a second. But now, we're ready for the main board. We have our screen, our analog stick, our speaker, and our buttons in place on the front of the case. It's time to put the main board in. For this, we're going to need five of the shorter screws. On the board itself, there's little screw icons, so it makes it really easy to know exactly where the screws go on the board. When placing the main board in the case, make sure the ribbon cable for the LCD and the analog stick are coming through the slot of the main board. And over on the left hand side, make sure the speaker wire is accessible. She's going to wrap around the main board here and plug into the slot labeled speaker. So now that we've made sure we have access to the speaker wire, the LCD ribbon cable, and the analog stick ribbon cable, it's time to put our screws in. Four smaller screws, and they'll go in each of the holes marked with a screw icon. Again, with these screws, you just need to snug them down. You don't need to over torque them. You don't want to strip this plastic out. We'll go ahead and flip it over, make sure all of our buttons are working properly. Looks like everything's good with this one. And now it's time to connect our speaker. It'll go in the connector marked speaker. So this is kind of a tricky part if you've never connected these ribbon cables before. This is a slider style ribbon cable connector. You're going to pull out the little gray piece. It's just going to slide a little bit. And we're going to place the LCD ribbon cable inside of here. There's a white mark on the ribbon cable. So when it's in far enough, you'll know it. It's going to line right up with the gray pullout tab. And we'll push the pullout tab back in. And your LCD is now connected to the main board. So now we need to connect the analog stick, and you need to be careful with this connector because I have had them break in the past, not on the Odroid Go Advance, but on other electronics that use this same connector. You need to be very gentle with this. It's got a pull-up tab, and we're just going to take the analog ribbon cable, and we'll place it right in there. If you have a pair of tweezers, I recommend using them because this can be a little cumbersome if you're just trying to use your fingers. You need to make sure this ribbon cable is inserted all the way, and then you can fold the tab back down very gently. So we're almost done here. We just need to install the trigger buttons, L and R. They just sit right in here. And now we need to install the battery. On the back of your battery, there will be a little peel off piece of double sided sticky tape. I've already taken mine off. And we're going to plug the battery right into the connector marked battery on the main board. We'll grab the back half of the case and there's a little cutout for the battery wire to go through. It'll stick to the back half right inside. We can place the back half on the case now, but make sure your speaker wire is coming through correctly. Make sure you're not going to pinch it off. Just line everything up and make sure my speaker wire is out of the way and it snaps together. Now all that's left to do is put your four screws in the back of the case, install your SD card, and power it up. You're going to use the four longer screws for the rear of the case. 
So as you can see, it's really easy to assemble the Odroid Go Advanced. You just need to be really careful with the screen and the connector for the analog stick. That's about it. Other than that, it's super easy. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Odroid also has a full assembly video on their website. I'll leave a link in the description to that in case you get stuck and you just want to check somebody else's work. And as for installing the operating system, you just need to flash an SD card like you would with RetroPie, but I will have a full tutorial coming up very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Advanced Go, just let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my other videos I've created on this unit. I've done some showcase videos. Links for those are also in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.